In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a consistent looking character across a range of body shots going from close up to a full body shot. I'm going to share with you why it's so valuable to build that range of shots in the first place for a visual narrative project and provide a great facility to organize your most important mid-journey images for a character project. I'll also share with you some really useful face fixing software since we still see mid-journey producing blemishes on character faces in certain generations. If you're working on your own character, artwork project or a full blown visual narrative with mid-journey, then please connect with us in our free forum and share with us some of your work and join the con conversation. At Digital Art Live we explore using cost effective tools including mid-journey to create storytelling artwork. So I'm going to explore a character based on the likeness of the film star Meg Ryan. You can see I've created a whole series of body shots starting with an extreme close-up all the way to a full body shot. I'll show you how to obtain this valuable range of body shots for a character. The objective is to build a set of reference images for a particular character. The first or prime reference should have the character's facial features in close-up. That primary reference can be remixed to other mid-journey art where the character's face hasn't turned out so well. For a visual narrative project, I store my reference images and prompts outside of mid-journey and that's for important characters, environments and props. For a character, I will create a whole series of images starting with the standard shots for a character and I'll place those images in a reference database where I can easily find the original prompts and important reference images to call upon. So I recommend using the tool of MindMeister. It's an online mind mapping software to create that visual database. I think a mind map suits artists since it's so visual and flexible and helps you see the big picture and helps connect ideas together. It's essential for a visual narrative or character based project. But first let's go over the terminology of camera shots for characters and what part they play in telling a story. So starting with an extreme close-up, this isn't about the whole subject, it's just about the eye or the eyes, and this can say a lot with just a little of the character shown. A quotation from Ridley Scott, the director, says the most important organ in the human body is the eye. It's like a two-way mirror. The eye doesn't only see a lot, the eye also gives away a lot. And that's certainly true in terms of emotion and expression. So these three examples show extreme close-ups. So you can see we can quickly can convey an emotion and it's a great way to, uh, especially to create uh, an intense emotional energy to the viewer. In a close-up shot, we can gain a significant emotional connection with just one character and the character's expression is going to signal something important in this kind of shot. And it acts as a mirror for us. We see ourselves reflected back in the characters that we see. We see the world and the events of their story through their eyes. With a medium shot, a great way, it's a great way to capture both the details of an actor's performance but also their surroundings. The distance from the subject means that you can position multiple uh, characters or actors at once in a scene and capture everything that they're doing, including their body language. So at first glance, it's just to establish the characters as being lost in the jungle for this example from Jurassic Park. They're surveying the scene in front of them from the waist up. Now a cowboy shot 
is a little bit larger than a medium shot for a character but smaller than a full or wide shot. It's called a cowboy shot because it was used often in western films to frame a gunslinger's gun or holster from the hip up and it's an area of action that was obviously really important for these type of films. And the cowboy shot super useful to show that character in a heroic confident way whilst also allowing your viewer to see more of the environment and action taking place around that character in the shot. With a wide or long shot this often shows a full body shot and that character's relation to everything around them. The wide shot lets the viewer absorb all the information at once and of course these kind of shots take a little bit more planning for composition of everything in the shot. So for that first prime reference getting that is crucial. We're aiming for a character portrait that is a close-up, at worst a loose close-up that includes the shoulders and top of the torso. In mid-journey mid we would have a much better chance of getting a clear detailed face but we would still need to do some cleanup afterwards perhaps. So some notes on the keyword for this uh, prompt. I'm using the word raw color photo. A raw file is a lossless uh, file unlike a JPEG file. It captures uncompressed data from somebody using a camera. So that helps mid-journey to perhaps just filter through those uh, images that are, are raw files, lossless images, no compression. We're pinning the Meg Ryan character at 25 years old each time, uh, trying to reference her at this particular age uh, to provide that consistent look. We're using plain simple clothing, white t-shirt, uh, blue jeans. We're using a grey background which makes it easier to lift the character from the background for compositing. We're using the term backlighting to ensure the character is more 3D like, it's not a flat looking uh, character. We want the character subject in focus and to have a little bit of film grain to get the particular look and feel of a photo shoot. So you can see some issues with the eyes and lips with this reference image. In particular, uh, but we, we can tidy up or just choose to re-roll. Now I recommend the tool Vance AI for automatically improving the face and tidying up these mid-journey blemishes. Now there is a disadvantage in that the skin is smoothed so that the skin pores and detailing is lost somewhat, but Vance AI has lots of different tools in its web-based software, but I use the AI Portrait Retoucher. There's free credits uh, when you first start, but it does include a watermark on the processed image. Now we're on to building a second reference image. I'm using the keyword of full body photograph in this prompt to try and pull back that virtual camera so we get to include some more of the character's body. Because we're using our prime reference image in the prompt, Midjourney is working between the full body shot and the reference image, giving us something in between. This is advantageous because we are reinforcing the details of the face as well as pulling back the camera at the same time. I'm still using the same keywords to pin down some consistency in the prompt for the character, including the age, clothing and background. Now with this second reference portrait shot, we still get the chance of blemishes occurring, uh, which has, ha has happened here. So we can always use the Vance AI tool again to clean these up. So here's the second reference portrait cleaned up, ready to iterate again to rinse and repeat 
and this second reference image is used in the next mid-journey prompt to gain a proper mid-shot or even a cowboy shot where we can end up seeing the character's uh, waist. Then we come on to the fourth reference image. At this stage it's harder in mid-journey to gain a character with consistent detailed facial features when getting to a medium full shot which is just above the character's knees. This is something I've, I've noticed uh, in trying to do this across a range of characters. Now you'll notice the background also uh, has altered somewhat as we iterate with successive reference images and you can see it's not as plain grey as before so, so watch out for this as you go through that iterative process. So what are our options at this stage? We could just keep re-rolling, we could, we could also use remixing, a remix mode and go back to our prime reference image to try and reinforce and and give a uh, make that face uh, correct again. I also tried some other approaches at this point. Uh, one really good trick is to put full body shot right at the front of the prompt which mid journey tends to take greater notice of. So any words, keywords or description you put towards the front of the prompt it ends up being more weighted and mid-journey seems to take more notice of it. In this case I also tried without using a reference image just for comparison and you can see here the facial features certainly need some work. After some re-rolls without using reference images I became a bit happier with the character suddenly appearing sitting down. This position allows for better facial features so these ended up as useful reference images to store in my visual database. Now in other examples I, I tried earlier with the same Meg Ryan lookalike character and using the same iterative technique I did have better success. Uh, the difference here is that the age of the character was pinned to 35 years old rather than 25. And so the conclusion is that with mid shots of a character or closer you can certainly gain fairly consistent results with a character's face. With a medium full shot which is down to a character's knees the facial features can become more basic or malformed and the same with longer shots. But with more attempts it is possible to gain better medium full shots and full shot reference images. You could also use post work techniques such as compositing to gain a more consistent look for facial features for those full body shots as well. So how about you? What techniques do you use for consistency of characters used in different shots? Let me know in the, in the comments below and please join the conversation to post your artwork on this topic at digitalartlive.studio, our free forum.